Hey everybody, it's Dan Martin. Today's video is going to be on what I call backswing essentials. Haven't done too many videos on backswing. I know some people have requested it. So we're gonna get into that a little bit. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit with my pro, but I'm just gonna give you a little bit of understanding of the backswing and just even a little history of my own golf swing, which has really improved over the last five years quite a bit. And, and probably one of the biggest improvements is working with the backswing. Came from swinging the pro. It's kind of the movement patterns I learned and having to create the correct motion on the forward swing does require some very, very essential things in the backswing. And I think a lot of golf instruction, particularly in the last, you know, not recently, but kind of going back, you know, 10, 20 years, really started to get people this idea you needed to restrict your backswing to get power. And I think that even kind of messed me up in my kind of younger teaching days and probably messed a few people up along the way. So I apologize. But anyways, my of tendency always has been in backswing is to kind of get going, but to never really fully let myself turn. I try to resist with my lower body and then my upper body would kind of stop turning and then my arms would kind of fold in just a little bit. And although I would kind of fake this kind of good position, it, I never could like generate the power that I thought that I was always capable of doing. Well, lo and behold, the bigger problem is, is that to really make a good backswing, it isn't about re restricting your hips. It's actually about getting the biggest turn you possibly can. And the reasons for that, I'm going to kind of switch over to my pro here, is that for the physics of a golf swing to work, you need access to this part of the swing. When you take a backswing back and you try to resist and things kind of collapse, and this happens for a lot of people because they just try too hard to keep their head still or their eye on the ball, is that you actually don't get access to the swing. And so here's what I mean here. My pro, when we swing this, the, the skill is to learn how to keep it straight from the top. And when it forms an angle, it tells us that something is distorting the swing. I'm not able to access the true extensive quantity of momentum, okay? So when I go back, if I don't turn, I'm gonna kind of feel like I have to use my hands and arms more than anything. So I can kind of make golf swing movements, but if we watch this in slow motion, we're gonna see this thing is bending like crazy. For me to learn the skill of the pro, I actually have to make a deep turn like so to get this thing to wrap around. So then I can really have the skill of getting it to line up. And what invariably happens is you start learning is like, wow, I actually turned so far, I can't see the ball that well. And then I'm able to really feel some of the, the pieces of the downswing that are the keys to really getting it going correctly. Players that don't make a big turn, I don't care how hard you try to use your lower body to get it going, you just can't, don't have enough time and enough room to actually create really good sequencing. So a big turn, I let this thing wrap around. At the top of my swing, you should be able to see my kind of upper right lat here. If you can't get here without your foot coming off the ground, you should let it come off the ground. And I know a lot of people that follow me on YouTube are older. You need to learn to let this go because what you're looking for in your golf swing is likely, because I see this all the time in people that, that purchase my product, they just simply don't turn enough. To get the swing to work, if I make a big turn, then I'm good to go. So that is a super, super, the super, the most important essential of kind of getting a good forward swing is learning how to turn. Now, do I care on the back swing exactly kind of the plane of your arms and, and how perfect that goes back? I would say no for most people, but as you get better and better, our back swing should really go back on a really clean line as well. Because a back swing actually, if you really break it down, is a return from a forward swing. A swing is like an oscillating motion that goes back and forth and never stops, kind of like a pendulum. So the return motion actually is my backswing. So if I have enough momentum on my backswing, it tends to carry me to the right spot and gets me a big enough turn. Now, a couple other details that aren't really related to the pro, but I'd say if, the, if you change one thing, if you could just get that bigger turn and find some way to get it where you got all the way back, you have access to your swing. The other things that I would work on in your backswing would be some of my preferences. A lot of people that, you know, they see me swing the pro and they see my arms collapse. Well, I don't hit a golf ball from here. That's just to get the rope to work and to understand the physics of energy transfer. My preferences though, as I take a big turn, we wanna make sure we turn so big that our arms actually don't have to go so far. This is why you see some, a lot of tour pros that have these big turns and these kind of short swings. You go, wow, they have such a short swing and hit it so far. They don't have a short swing. They have a massive turn and then they're just making it a little bit more simple to transfer momentum and a quicker, quicker range of, of, of or a quicker, a quicker uh, kind of frame rate or a quicker, quicker, uh, quicker time range. So when I, but some players will take it back a little bit deeper. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, variance in kind of where the arms can go. My preference though for most people is to actually make a big turn but feel like the arm stays extended and the club doesn't load down. 
And the reason I don't want to see this is as this starts to load down, it tends to make people start casting. So I want to get to the top of the swing. If I feel like this is lighter and underloaded, when I make my motion, there's a lot less resistance here and I can get the club going a lot faster. All right, here is a bad one going back. You can see that I don't really turn. I'm resisting it and it's forcing my arms, my head staying too still, my arms start to kind of fold in, really exaggerating here. So same thing, as I'm kind of going back, you can see that I'm, I'm getting bound up because I'm not letting myself turn. So it's gonna cause something to kind of give on this side or give on the top of the swing. On the good one, you can see as I, as I start back, you can see my hips open a little more early. My upper body is way open way earlier. And then of course, at the top of the swing, that allows me, I don't feel like I have to kind of fold this in to get longer. So down the line, what you can see is if I stay too still, my arms kind of suck in behind me, which could lead to all types of, of big problems on the way down. And then I just have no room to swing the golf club on plane. Okay, so I'd feel like I'd have to kind of kick my body out of the way. Whereas when I do a really good one, you can see again, the club kind of extends away from me more as my turn is bigger. I have all this freedom and now I'm in a spot where I can really come down in a really, really good line. In review here, the, some of the key backswing essentials that I really feel like you need to focus on, big turn is your biggest, you know, the most important thing you do. Then as you start to learn how to make a big turn, let's get the club set in a spot where it's a little underloaded so it makes, it makes less resistance coming on the way down. I right, hope you guys all found that helpful and we'll see you all next time.